Here we go. Hello everyone and welcome back to BD Studios. Last week I ended up making like uh, a realistic bird with oil pastels based on an actual photography, a picture of a bird. And so my friend D here is like, what? What did you say to me? I said, I can't do that. Are you crazy? And I said, really? Okay, so let's start with the basics. I said, I'm going to make a video where I'm just going to use basic shapes. Remember? Yes. When you were in kindergarten, when you were in first grade, second grade, third grade. <laughs> <laughs> it, <Adult>. never, <laughs> it never changed. If you look at art and drawing and shapes, it comes easier to you. And the more you practice, the better. So in this video, it's a simple exercise of showing you how you can take simple shapes to make birdies. It was so enlightening. It's like a light bulb went off. All right, so let's watch the video together and then we can walk through all the different steps and you tell me, do you think you're gonna be able to try this? Totally. All right, so what I'm doing right here is just holding my pencil. Notice how I hold my pencil at an angle. I don't hold it like when you're, when you're writing your name upright, hold it down. So you're almost like sketching, like a charcoal almost. Right. And I'm just gently, you know, doing little lines doing the branch of the tree there and then I'm gonna hold it up close to the camera so you, you guys can see see I'm doing the little baby now it's a little circle a little triangle then I did the oval for the body and then the fail t uh, the tail feather yeah and I like the, to hold my pencil like that because when I hold it like a pencil I get stressed I put a lot of pressure and if I hold it like a charcoal I, my hand can't be so tight and your lines will be a lot softer. You yeah. see? You see how cute? Now I'm going to go over every single shape. The head. A nice circle. Triangle for the beak. An oval for the body. And like an almond shape, you would yeah. say, or a leaf. Mm -hmm. Again, circle, triangle, oval, and then the rectangle down there for the uh, tail feather. And again, the little guy, circle triangle oval and basically a rectangle and so the the rest of the stuff is just the branches for the tree which is just lines lines i could have left them floating in the air but you know just to give them somewhere to sit that was nice of you isn't that nice <laughs> i don't want them to you know they, they get They're tired, tired right? <laughs> they get tired of their flying <sighs> how long must i hold this position <laughs> so all i did there was erase my the line that went over the branch okay so we're gonna use watercolors. And again, like I did on the last one, I'm obsessed with craft paper. You know, when you get in these yes. obsessions and you do yes. it and do it and do it until later on, you're like, I don't wanna ever see craft paper exactly. again. But, but for, for now, now it works. yes, for now it works. And for this simple exercise that I did just for you, I took down the basics, Thank basics, you. basics. And it looks pretty user-friendly, don't you think? Super user-friendly. I Like I told you before, breaking it down into its individual component parts was life-changing yeah i'm gonna watch it intensely see the little feet all i did was two little lines two little lines three little lines because they're mm -hmm. little they're little um claws oh, right? you know they're just tiny 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 and this guy or this girl this could be just two girlfriends talking about their kids you know yeah. <laughs> they're like oh my god the kids are driving me crazy <laughs> oh i didn't notice juniors right next to me <laughs> But they're just hanging out in the tree, talking about how their day That's went. Right. And I'm just, see how I just simply outlined everything in black? It's good. It gives you your reference. Yeah, and you don't have to be too careful. You just kind of... Yeah. You don't like something later on, you just cover it. You know, watercolor mm -hmm. is also very forgiving. All of them. All of it's forgiving, really. There we go. So now I clean my brush and I try to decide what color I'm going to use to paint and I ended up picking blue. A nice blue. I wanted to keep it real simple. I don't want to complicate it too much. But then you'll see that later on I get a little more complicated. But <laughs> I've never known you to do anything <laughs> simple. <laughs> it's fun and you know you you get lost in it. Yes. I start painting though I'm I'm a pretty hyperactive person when I but when I start painting I'm I'm able to relax and Yeah. And take it all in and enjoy the process. Don't make it too difficult. Now, here's another idea. If you have a hard time figuring out colors. Yes, I do. Okay. So the wing, you know, if the light hits it, if there's a shadow, whatever, it's always going to be a little different. 
And just to add dimension, just take two shades of blue. Take a darker blue, take a lighter blue, instead of having to add white or black and change your color or mixing colors. A lot of people have difficulty mixing yes, colors. Yes. So it's intimidating to well, me. Well, there's so many shades nowadays that you could just pick up two different blues, blend them together, and that's it. Wow. So what I did was I used like a teal and like a darker sky blue, and I just mixed them together so that the wing part that, yeah. pops a little bit. You see? That just makes it so easy. You have a difficult time with that? That just makes it. And I think I added like a little bit of green there or a little bit of yellow. Just play with it. It's so fun. That is a great tip. Just two colors that are next to each other, two different blues. Mm -hmm. And if you paint them side by side, you have automatic you have shadow. Automatic shadow without having to, to think too much. So here I ended up doing red for the for the chunky bird. The, the bird is chunky. The bird is nice and... And healthy. He's been eating a lot of worms. There you go. <laughs> it's the early bird. It's the early bird that gets the worm. So this is like a bright red. Yeah, that's what I'm using. I'm using a nice bright red. And then I ended up picking up for the body later on, like more of a scarlet color. You'll see. Let's finish the little head there. You see how there's nothing to it. This would make a great card for somebody. Oh, yeah. A birthday card, a thank you card, whatever. Just you something, think, you something from your heart. Right. You fold the, the craft paper in half, and then you can, you know, freehand whatever you want inside. See, I'm using scar like a scarlet deeper red for the body. So right now, I'm actually creating a shadow yep. because the color is different. Right. The same, but, but different. Di mm -hmm. So then I ended up picking the scarlet and then I end up scarlet and picking up the bright red and mixing them together. And I did get a little bit of black. See how I'm doing a little shallow? Yes. One? But just do it right under the wing and blend it. And it just gives the illusion that it's lifting. Yeah. It's right. One is thing is on top. The other one's on the bottom. I love it. They're coming to life already. So now I picked up a little bit of mustard. And always have your water handy so that if the paint is too dry or you need to pick up a little bit more water to soften the paint, you have your, your paint ready. I'm also using a jar off to the side where I clean my brush. So when I change colors, you should clean your brush. Always. That's what you always say. Clean your brush. Did you clean your brush? That's it's very important. Yep. Bec unless you don't care and you want a big mess all over the place. <laughs> if you're doing uh, like an abstract or something, you don't care one color blending into the other, don't don't clean your brush. But what happens a lot of times is that things become muddy. Right. So you don't want, you know, everything to end up being the same colors. Mm -hmm. Hence why you need to clean your brush. So. And here so, you are. You're uh, using good happy I mean, colors. I'm making him yellow. Everybody's happy here. It's yeah. a happy, 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 happy. All the kids from the neighborhood are hanging out. The moms are talking. There you go. And you're using really bright colors, which also help. It's fun. I also wanted to show up really good on the camera. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to pick fun colors. I love it. So there, I cleaned it again. A little black. Too much. See? Put it off to the side and clean. So what I'm doing right now is just adding a few lines. See? There's n no basic... I went to the t um, to the side feather and I just added a, a few lines. His little eyeball, which is just a dot. Yeah, and just lines. And just lines, great. lines, lines, up, up and down. Then I'm gonna do the same thing for her. What you notice by the time I get to her, my brush is almost dry, which is good because you're you're adding a little bit. And I went back and just got a little bit more. So a little bit goes a long yeah. way. Do not drench your brush. But you see, with the leftover, very little. I go up and up, 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 following the same line of the bird. And that adds a little bit of dimension. It adds, like if it had, you know, feathers. more more feathers, you know. Yeah. So here I ended up doing the the tail feather. Is that a tail feather? Not so wing. wing. I sharpened it up a little bit. Not so rounded. So I'm just ensuring that everything that I painted is... Uh, popping by adding the black so what am i doing now oh the tree time for tree and there you do the same thing you did two colors next to each other right did you see i picked up that that terracotta and i picked up the chocolate and i blend them up uh, blend them together and then somewhere along the line i picked up a little bit of gray because the trees are not just one color right that's gray that i picked up there but i picked up the gray because i'm doing it behind him so i want it to be just or her 
wanted it to be just a little darker. I love the I love that I don't have to think about the process that I just pick up two colors and paint them and it does it for me automatically. Two colors and it, and it's creating a uh, shadow depth. There we go. I do like I do like the mixing of the two colors because it gives it that pretty. And if you don't like it, you go over it again, which is what I like. Pretty definition there. Let's see. And you could even go, you see all those colors that are together. The There's that mossy green. There's mm -hmm. a mustard. They're all very earthy yeah you could add that to the tree as well you get a little bit of green you're gonna add a little bit of mustard and it's all earth tones yeah and it would look really pretty and again it that's your style you know any everybody's style is different i like things that are bright and i'm brilliant though i do a little bit of both but my style is very poppy yeah and this is almost like a cartoonish yeah. type of uh of a painting and you can just leave it like that you could but you, you could, won't. but but I won't, <laughs> cause more is more. There you go. Me like more. So let's see. See, I could leave it like that. I think it's super cute. Yeah. But wait, there's more. But there's more. So I think I'm cleaning my brush. I don't know what I'm doing at this point right here. See, you have to stop and look at every time you're painting or sketching. Stop. Look at your piece. What do you want to do next? What is it that that it's missing? I think what's missing right now is that I wanted to, there we go. I wanted to add a little shadow to the eyes. Always add a little white to the eyes because eyes are not completely dark like that. Add a little bit of white. And watercolor, as you could tell, my, my, the eye was still dark. So I'm picking up black on the white paint. So I've decided here, I got to let it dry. <laughs> so background, background nice. time. I'm ended, uh, I ended up picking up yellow. And what I'm doing is I'm just allowing the rest of it to dry because since I have no no patience whatsoever, right. I'm allowing it to dry. This is why I don't do I don't paint with oil because you have to wait and it takes a long time to dry. And I'm I like instant gratification. Watercolor is kind of fun for that too. You know they say instant gratification isn't fast enough. Yes, I agree. <laughs> Girl, you know how it is. Wow. Um, See now. I would definitely not stop where I wanted to. I would definitely add the background. It just adds, every, it makes everything pop. It's fun, right? Mm -hmm. I love it. It's, it's all about layers, color. right? Yeah. All about layers. And I did just one shade of yellow. Okay. If you would want, you would go and add that nice deep mustard. Uh -huh. It could add another dimension and make it like maybe the, the sky it was later on during the day. Okay. You could have added a little orange because it's at sunset. So right. what I'm doing right now is that I took black again and I want to pop it even more. I did like little parentheses around the eyes. I'm emphasizing the wing again just because that's what I like. I like it real dark. I like it to pop against the background. And also the craft paper eats a lot of Yes, the it does. It does suck up a lot of the color. So I added a little more black there because I wasn't happy with the brown. So a little bit of black and see, I kept my dirty water over there that had black in it. So it wouldn't be so dark either, but it does add dimension to it. It sure does. Mm, I missed the little feet there. I'm going to add a little blue because the feathers go all the way down to her, to her little feet. She's so cute. She almost looks like she's wearing heels. There you go. <laughs> so you see, I wasn't satisfied with the white. Mm -hmm. So I went and got acrylic paint and there look, see go. the difference. It pops big time. Boom. And this helps it become more cartoony. Does that make sense? Yes. A little, a little more poppy. So instead of having so much dark, now I'm coming in with white. You know, if you would want to blend, you would blend even more. But we're not trying to go for realistic here. We're right. trying to go for whimsical. We're trying to go for cartoony character. And just easy. Fun and and easy. easy. I didn't want to make something so complicated. Um, so that's why I'm adding all the white to yeah. the beaks. It just brings it to life. It, it adds on a whole other layer. You could spend a long time fixing this up. You can, after this is dry, you can come back in with a pen and refine everything. Yes. You could write words in the tree. Oh, that's a great idea. You know, you could do so many things and then you could personalize it and make it a card if you would want to. Write totally something in the background, idea. you know. Yeah. 
Look how cute. Look at, look at how the white just added a whole new layer. Yes, they look actually gives them emotions. Right? You don't have to paint it. You can use a po uh, Posca pen. Yep. Are they called Posca? Posca pen. I always pronounce it wrong. Posca pen. And look. Aww. Look at that. How cute. How poppy it becomes. Oh, that. they're so cute. I hope everyone loved this project. I think everyone should try it. It's I love fun for the kids. It's something that's simple. And I hope you give it a try. Voila. It's done. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. And thank you for making that project. I love it. I love that you loved it. I do. I, do. Um, I want to encourage everybody, please, to like and subscribe and support our channel. I really appreciate it. And as we always say, stay, stay focused. centered. Stay focused. No, we, we stay focused first. <laughs> <And then laughs> stay centered, centered and stay creative. creative. <laughs> See you next you time. Bye.